Hello everyone, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, web, the WebKit Clutter port and where, we're, where it's going or not going. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> so WebKit Clutter, many of you know it here. It's, it's been a while since we are working on it. I think, it's, I think it started at like 2010 or something. It's been, it's been quite a while. Uh, it was good for a client of us uh, who was building an R&D IVI, so in vehicle infotainment system. It was built for a, a car computer. Uh, that platform was using Clutter uh, as, it, as its main UI, and it was being kind of pushed by Intel. Uh, Intel was kind of advertising the use of Clutter for that at the time. You, you might remember Migo and all that good stuff. Uh, it was heavily based on WebKit GTK, but what, what we actually did was we reused mu much of the WebKit 1 GTK API for WebKit Clutter, and we created a few, uh, a few objects of our own just to, to ease integration with uh, Clutter. So, since it was kind of an R&D and we didn't really uh, get confirmation that this was a long-term <coughs> effort, which in hindsight <laughs> it kind of was, uh, we never upstreamed it. So there was never uh, any real effort to upstream this code. Uh, it was interesting because it allowed for multiple Clutter frontends. You might remember that at the time, well, Clutter is not really a toolkit. It's more of a scene graph only. And it, has, it had lots of competing toolkits at the time, MX, uh, ST, inside GNOME Shell, some others. And we, we didn't know what, the, what this uh, company was doing, what kind of UI it was going to use. So we built it uh, in a way that we could switch which uh, toolkit was used for rendering widgets in the, inside the page, for instance. And it, it also had uh, accelerated compositing very early on, uh, at the time where, where, where Texture Mapper did not exist, right? Uh, there was on, essentially only Apple doing core graphics, and at the same time that we developed uh, accelerated compositing with Clutter, uh, the Qt people were doing uh, the Qt accelerated compositing as well, which did, later they gave up on for reasons that we understand as the Clutter Porter maintains, uh, and, and wrote <laughs> Texture Mapper. Uh, it's interesting because uh, we built this with Clutter, so the layers that we have on, a, on our accelerated compositing implementation are Clutter actors, and that lets us do some interesting things. Uh, so this uh, R&D IPI platform is now being uh, publicly released. It's, it changed quite a bit. Uh, it's, still, it's still not being, uh, let's say, publicized a lot. It's not nobody's like, marketing it yet, but you can find uh, the website already online and also some other resources. It's a purchase.org. Uh, it's an IPI platform. It's based on Debian technologies and GNOME technologies. Uh, Uses system D, uh, X, that kind of thing. We're in the process of moving to Wayland. Uh, and, uh, well, Collabora works on and provides some of the more basic components of it. We don't work on the actual SDK, let's say, on the actual middleware. We're, we work on a layer below that. And we didn't really have many details about this platform ourselves until uh, recently. So for this uh, platform, we're, we, we already have WebKit Clutter, right? Uh, this platform still uses Clutter and MX. Well, uh, with mostly custom widgets. Uh, I tried at some point to convince uh, the client that we should move towards GTK, but I was not very successful. Uh, I did manage, though, to convince them to go to Web, WebKit 2 GTK uh, more recently. And that decision was made because, well, WebKit Clutter was still WebKit 1, is still WebKit 1. <coughs> Uh, we are sick of not working upstream. Uh, we think that the effort to actually port the Clutter port to WebKit 2 would be quite big and would give us little, uh, well, 
little, there, there's no, not much advantage in doing so. Uh, we think that it's much better if we could uh, share work with the uh, GTK board. So we, we came up with this, but, but as you will remember from the last slide, uh, our the platform still uses Clutter, right? So what we came up with was we're going to, to write a WebKit Clutter GTK kind of thing. It's essentially WebKit 2 GTK uh, under the hood, but we have a Clutter GTK wrapper. So the instead of using WebKit WebView directly, there's this WebKit Web Clutter View that uh, is used to plug the web view inside Clutter applications. It's essentially a Clutter GTK actor wrapper uh, to use uh, for ease of use, but also the, our API users are really uh, into things like customizing input uh, handling and, uh, for instance, our our kinetic banning, that kind of thing. So we provide, for instance, the Clutter pen action uh, that Emanuele here wrote for for WebKit Clutter and is inside Clutter these days. Uh, <coughs> we provide a pen action through the Clutter actor for, for the API user to customize the behavior of the panning. This is quite tricky actually because Clutter GTK with the GDK backend of Clutter is, is, uh, is a mess because you have two hierarchies of GDK windows. Uh, it's, it's quite tricky. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but under the hood, uh, we have Yun's threaded compositor. We we we're, uh, we're trying to adopt it. Uh, Chang Sok is working on on making it work and trying to to see what's what's broken with it. Uh, what we can contribute. He already sent a few a couple patches, I think, to Yun. Uh, one good thing that the this uh, allows us is we are doing uh, we provide some a kind of fast zoom through the compositor. So when you're zooming the page, it will first it will first scale through the compositor and only after it's finished doing uh, the animation it will commit the, the zoom to, to the page. This is quite interesting. Uh, we have some features that we ported from Web WebKit Clutter. Uh, features that were specifically requested by the client and not necessarily uh, are good for having upstream, but some of them are, and we plan on well discussing with the other GTK, with WebKit GTK uh, developers, and seeing which ones are useful for us to to contribute. Otherwise, it's pretty much WebKit 2 GTK. We're we're trying not to, you know, make a separate port like we did for WebKit Clutter, but in, stay inside the WebKit GTK port and work inside it as much as we can. So, uh, but we still have some custom stuff, like I said. Uh, we have kinetic scrolling implemented inside web core uh, through the event handler, uh, <coughs> handler uh, and through the scroll animator. Uh, we have Chengstock also working on the async scrolling, but that is being worked on inside WebKit GTK directly, not inside WebKit Clipper. Uh, we have elastic bounce effect also using code that was there before, uh, used by Chromium. Nobody uses it anymore. Uh, and we have touch, adju touch adjustment, which is when you touch somewhere in the page, it tries to find the best target for, for that touch. Um, so. Are those features specific to Clutter in any way, or could no, they these, be upstream? These are all built on, on inside WebCore, but they're using uh, a bit old code, uh, code that's a bit old from the Chromium days. So our plan is to upstream these, but also try to uh, update it to uh, the you know newer newer realities. But we plan to contribute these. So are you using the like remove adjustment code? What? The touch adjustment code that was removed. Yes. You're, you're thinking about re-adding. Maybe in. Uh, not necessarily in the same fashion. We're going to evaluate that, but yeah. Uh, also, through the touch adjustment code, we have uh, this is something that coordinated graphics port also uses. Uh, 
we have a, a contextual zoom helper. So that's this is the thing that where you double click somewhere in the page and it focuses uh, a, a piece of the page that's interesting. So we have a, a bit of APIs, uh, a few APIs to help the browser do that, uh, implement that feature. So the touch adjustment code provides us with a way of finding the most likely candidate for focusing. And well, with, with the fast zoom and uh, fast scrolling, we can do a nice animation to the to focus the the interesting content. Uh, we well, like I said before, our accelerated compositing uh, in WebKit Clutter is actually Clutter. So one interesting thing that we had before was our video playing was was done through Clutter GTK. So, uh, Clutter GST. So that that made things much easier than for GTK, where we have this GST GL business, lots of complexity. Uh, we just said this here: take a layer, Clutter GTK as the sink. That's it. Uh, Clutter GST as the sink. That's it. And we provided uh, the the API user with a way of managing the animation from the Clutter GST video inside the page to a full screen uh, stage using Clutter animation for that. Uh, so Cheng Siok figured out a way of providing similar functionality for our uh, for our users using WebKit GTK. This is also something that we can maybe uh, contribute. Last but not least, like I said before, we had to provide in WebKit Clutter a way of customizing in-page elements from outside the browser. Uh, well, the customer really wants OEMs for IDI systems to be able to customize what's in, how the look and feel of a web engine alongside the other components. So, web also change the figured out a way, <laughs> this guy, he solves all the problems, you can see that. <laughs> figured out a way of allowing uh, usage of GTK CSS. So you provide a GTK CSS file to WebKit and say, use this for rendering the in-page elements, and then you can customize how the in-page elements work. We are not sure that if this is useful for WebKit GTK, but this is nothing to do with Clutter, and it's <coughs> completely GTK. Uh, so I think it could be useful for our printing because when when we are printing uh, a web page with uh, theme elements um, with the with the current GTK themes we are sometimes doing transparencies and things that <coughs> require the the page to be converted to a bitmap before printing and that makes the printing uh, very low quality, so uh, we could use that to use a custom CSS, GTK CSS only for printing to ensure that the widgets are rendered in a different way but without using cool transparencies that are not needed when printing, sure. so that could be useful. That sounds good, take note. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so WebKit Clutter is still better than our current version of WebKit Clutter GTK on scrolling. Uh, scrolling is really fast on WebKit Clutter. It's something that we spend lots of time doing, improving. And it, this is essentially because, like we were discussing yesterday in the breakout session for WebKit GTK, in our case, the tiles of, the, of our tile baking store are placed directly on the scene. So they are actors and they are placed directly on the scene. You render straight to the to the screen when you when you render the tile, and and since there are actors, we can do scrolling, for instance, with just translation. So it's really fast. It's really an, uh, almost uh, well very little overhead. Uh, Video is still tricky as well a bit. Uh, Cheng Shao was working <laughs> on GSTGL. <laughs> On integrating GSTGL with the uh, Unix Threaded Compositor, yeah, all the all the big problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Check so I saw that. <laughs> and well, like I said, we we already we we already have some uh, fast zoom implementation, but there's still some work to do there uh, in WebKit Clover GTK. That's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, this is the team that's here uh, for Collabora and who are also working on this project. Uh, Emanuele, like I said, worked on much of the input handling stuff and he's just joining the project again after uh, some, <coughs> uh, some vacations on Raspberry Pi land. <laughs> uh, I'm also leaving their emails because I'm uh, here now, but I'm going on, vac on vacation right after. <laughs> So I might not read email. Uh, and the code can be found at the git collabora.co.uk uh, repository site. Uh, it's under WebKit Clutter, but there's a GTK Clutter branch where the code is, in which Emanuele is going to be working on making master in the next few days <laughs> after he goes back from the uh, high test. OK, Martin. So you said that scrolling is faster in WebKit Flutter because you can paint the tiles directly, which seems obvious to me. But um, my question is, do you think that if we did that thing we were discussing yesterday where we moved the thread and compositor to the UI, the UI process, and then painted the tiles directly there, do you think that that could give WebKit to get the same sort of performance that you see in WebKit Flutter? I, I think so. Uh, I think with that and async, async scrolling, we can probably get a very similar performance. Okay. That's what I think. Uh, well, the problem that we were having is, was it was quite. Uh, we had the, the, the usual backing store where you paint the tiles and then you paint the final result. Yeah. And this second paint uh, was quite an overhead. So. Because you were painting pretty much all the all the page all the time, so that was an upload that, that we that you were doing all, all the time. And yeah, uh, I, I believe that takes a, away a lot of overhead. Because now you just paint, you just move the tiles and you paint the new tiles. You paint the tiles and you just translate them. That's. So these tiles are just uh, on Wayland, they correspond to an EGL surface that's based on a Wayland surface? <coughs> I think so, yes. So then you basically you have to coordinate frame callbacks for every tile, for instance. Yeah, yeah, you have to, you, you're saying uh, you have to make sure that all tiles are updated at the same time? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Interesting. Is there much overhead? Not really. Are they really surfaces, the tiles on the way? I guess we have, we have just one big surface and a GL context for free. And not yeah. full wheel on surfaces. Yeah, well, if you look at this is, this is, a, <coughs> this is a MX Launcher, it's our test browser running with Clut uh, WebKit Clutter. And this is, it, you, you know Clutter, there's a Clutter paint environment variable that you, gave, you give it paint volumes and it will show you the borders of the actors. So uh, you can see here that this is an actor. Ah. This is an actor, you know. Here's a graphics layer, which is an actor as well. This is Clutter rendering its, the border of the actors. So, I have questions? Huh? So, it looks like it's almost similar with... Uh, so, it <coughs> looks similar with the Weaver compositing Chrome, so you can compose the uh, UI element because it is uh, yeah, actually called the actors and web, each layer in the web page also, each layer and each tile is also called the actors, so yeah. you can compose like, the whole yeah. browser yeah. UI and web page in the same group. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, that's what they can do that, what, that's what Clot can do that, but uh, in, in our case, uh, and currently we don't have a like, GTK, uh, GTK's GL update loop, so that's why we cannot achieve the, 
those we cannot bypass two composite steps. So yes, yeah. that's a difference. Uh, except that tiles, the tiles, we we yes, we have tiles and whatever, but uh, yes, the biggest problem is the those one step compositing for web, all web browser stuff. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I I, I told you about Emmanuel, uh, oh, who was that? No, 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 no. Who made a clutter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Bassi. Bassi, yeah, I asked Bassi to add some API to, <laughs> to, yeah, to use the Wakey GTK to contact, to insert some Wakey layers, but uh, it was not so successful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, at, at some point we, at some point we, uh, we wanted to upstream the Clutter accelerated yeah. compositing to GTK, yeah. but it was lot. There was there were lots of problems, like because Clutter uses Coggle, which, it, uh, ah, yes, it, yeah, it insists that you only use it, so it for GL, so you can't have OpenGL usage outside of Coggle, yeah. so it was kind of tricky. Uh, in WebKit Clutter, we eventually wrote, for WebGL support, we wrote uh, a shim, so you, every every call, GL call goes through Coggle <coughs> in uh, WebKit Clutter. With current GTK, this, this can be problematic because GTK itself is going to be using GL. But that's something that we can consider as well. Uh, for the future, I guess, that yes, so, yeah, we to can. use the GTK scene graph at, yeah. similar to the way we use Clutter yes. for, for textures. I think we go into that for GTK actually. Yeah. To integrate the title directly into the GTK scene Or to at least render the titles directly into the widget for a buffer. When it's time to render. Yeah. We don't have to. Sorry. Without hacking the X window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Without violating the security. Yeah, violating the security and mess up all the window systems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? So, what, what's your timeline for upstreaming stuff? Or what's your. Uh, well, we finished. We believe that we finished the port of the functionality to it. This following quarter, we're going to be working on performance stuff. And I, I believe that in this following quarter, we can already start uh, discussing the upstreaming. We can already start upstreaming some of the code. Will you be able to provide a bot? A what? A bot to run. Ah, sure. But. Um, to the build at least. Sure. So many ports. Yeah. I thought WebKit was dying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will. <laughs> but not this day. <laughs> Make more ports. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, so thank you. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. We'll talk later about this.